What's up guys and welcome back to this Mercedes Mobility Minibus motorhome conversion. So today's video is pretty much just going to be a bit of a progress update video rather than any of my how to or how I've done videos because this build's been going on for quite a while now and it's getting to the stage now where I'm about two thirds through. It's down to a lot of the final finishing touches but obviously a lot of those do take that little bit of extra time to try and get looking nice and neat. So I'm in the middle of a lot of jobs, but I'm not really at the stage where I've completed a lot of them. A lot of them are needing just daft little bits and bobs to finish them off, and then they'll be fully finished. And then there'll be some update videos coming out of additional jobs that have been done. But in the meantime, I just thought I'd do a quick update on the build, just to show exactly what has been done, what is in the middle of getting done, and what I still need to actually start all from scratch. So in regards to what's already been done, the build's been cracking along quite nicely and everything that is finished is already on my channel already so far. So going from the basic minibus, it's had all the flooring stripped out, removed, new insulation laid down, new flooring, plywood flooring laid, with the safety flooring laid on top of that. All of the side walls have had all of the old insulation stripped out and new insulation built in. And all of the minibus windows going all the way around have had the window size reduced dramatically. The ones in the front have been cut down by half, as you can see. They've been fully insulated over and then plyboarded over and then they're going to be clad over as well. And that will add a lot more privacy inside the motorhome once it's fully finished off. That also goes for the ceiling as well. That's been fully insulated as well because the original minibus only had a little bit of fiberglass insulation inside the old roof lining. So that's all been taken down. Brand new 25mm Solitex has been installed throughout. Then it's all been cladded and ready to have the final PVC cladding put up for the ceiling as well. Now on the roof there's also two 275 watt solar panels for 550 watts of solar charging. And as you can see I've got a Victron CCGX colour control module. And I've also got the Victron 70 amp solar con charge controller. And I've also got a Victron Multi Plus Compact. I'm in the middle of finishing off the wiring for these. Most of the wiring's already in place. It's just a case of now putting the final cables up to the sockets, which, as you can see, I'm halfway through at the moment as well. Now there's going to be a mix of 240 volt hookup sockets and inverter sockets, because as you can see in my electricity cupboard, I've also got a distribution box mounted in there as well, and that has a hookup point mounted on the side of the bus. In here I've also got a few safety cutoff switches as well, one for the inverter so you can turn the main charge going to the inverter from the battery bank on and off and also a feed going for the 12 volt system so you can turn the entire 12 volt system on and off with one main master switch. Now all the electrics are being fed by two Odyssey 214 amp hour batteries so those in combination give over 400 amp hours so there's never going to be any shortage of power because those are marine grade dual purpose AGM batteries. So they could be discharged to 80% over 400 times and you still won't damage the batteries. That's how seriously high grade these are. So electricity wise it's coming along quite nicely. As I say I've got the full hook up installed, I've got my inverter mounted, I've got my solar charging kit sorted out. The batteries are all wired in in place. A lot of the 12 volt electrics have been ran just need to do a final cable tidy up when it's all fully finished off and as you can see that's going to be my main metering and electricity panel I've got the full Victron CCGX, I've also got water tank level meters, I've got my underslung gas level meter I've got some USB charging points I've got a full 13 amp spur uh, switched and that goes for the hookup for the induction hub that's on the Thetford top line series this has gas and induction on so if you're on hookup you can run off the induction hub if you're on gas you can just use your normal two burners as usual really really nice really expensive hub this as well I'm spending more in this kitchen build than I have in my home at home which is quite daft really but it's the way things are when you're trying to get some top-end motorhome equipment same with this Thetford three-way fridge. I'm in the process of getting this fully finished and installed. 
Now this is an N175 fridge and to buy new these would have been about 1300 quid. The exact same model of the equivalent new model is still available. I think they're the N1070s or 1080s and again they were about 1300-1400 quid. And they're exactly the same size. So this is going to be a really nice sized fridge freezer when that's fully fitted. And then above that it's going to have a Smev gas oven. And I'm thinking I might put a microwave up there as well. If not that's just going to be additional cupboard storage. Now you can see I've also got the full sofa bed built. This is a fully extendable sofa bed with a flip up panel there that flips up to allow the backrest to sit down on top of it. And that just extends out the bed to give a three foot wide just over six foot long bed so that's a really nice really comfortable bed that would pretty much be able to suit any sized body to be able to get away and sleep away on it for a few nights now at the back i've got a full sized small double bed this is on ottoman lifting hinges as well so if you're loading the motorhome from the rear doors just a push with a finger and the full bed frame lifts up to give access fully underneath the bed and under there is a wealth of storage space and as you can see I'm also in the middle of getting my water pumps the water accumulator things like that wired in as well I've got all my water piping fed underneath the bus coming out where it's needed I've got a cold feed coming up there for what's going to be a Thetford C200 electric toilet I've also got a cold feed coming under there for a hot water uh, the Truma hot water system I'll show you that in a second I've also got my hot and cold water coming up there because eventually here is going to be where I'm going to be having an undermounted sink. So that's going to be a sink going down into this area. This shelf will just come straight out. And there's going to be drainage going down and under the bus and going down to an underslung water storage tank. Now I've got two tanks mounted underneath the bus. I've got a 250 litre fresh water tank and a 150 litre waste water tank. So in theory you could go away for probably over a month and you still wouldn't have to fill up on water, you'd still have plenty of water for running showers, running toilets, things like that. And as you can see the shower room's been coming along nicely as well. I've got all the sides cladded out, I've got the bath, uh, the shower tray in place. My shower door has only just arrived in the last couple of days so I'm going to be mounting that in the next couple of days as well. I might need to build a little extending wall coming down the side there because I think the shower door goes to about seven, uh, 70 centimetres and the width of the shower tray is just over one metre so it'll probably need a little extending door just building in there with a bit more cladding applying and that'll all get covered in the bathroom cladding video and there's plenty of videos still to come there's lots of jobs that I'm still halfway through so that's why I'm just doing this quick progress update just to show what's going to be due to be coming on this uh, channel soon so I say it's going to be a full uh, Thetford C200 toilet going into there it's going to be a full shower getting fitted with full hot water hot cold running water fully drained out as well I haven't uh, drilled the drain hole in the shower tray yet again another job I've still got to do and then the windows are going to be getting fully not blacked out but frosted out just so they'll still allow light in but it's going to give a lot of privacy so people can't just look through the window while you're in the shower or in the toilet I'm in the kitchen area this isn't fully fitted in yet because I need to finish off the fridge before I can fin uh, finish the units because the units will screw through into this Conti side board and then into the side of the fridge to make sure that that doesn't go anywhere. But the cupboards themselves, they're all made so they just need some doors attaching and a kickboard along the bottom and then that'll be the kitchen cupboards done and as I say I've still got the sink to fit into the uh, cupboard down there as well. But once they're in place that'll still get plenty of kitchen cupboard storage space and above I've also started building some overhead cupboards. I've built that one above the kitchen side, I've built this smaller one above the sofa bed area so again just for additional storage. And then at the back above the uh, bed I've just started uh, building some cupboards there as well. These are the fascias for the cupboards, they just need attaching once I've gave them a lick of paint and got some doors cut down and hinges mounted. So that's probably going to be another job that I'll try and do today, later on. I'll get some exterior doors cut for these uh, cupboard fascias, get some hinges mounted, try and get these on, and that'll be another job done. Now at the back of the bus, I do have climate control system built into this bus. 
that's where I've got these two units on either side. I've used the original uh, covers for those just because that's what they were there for. They're made to go over it. And I've cut a hole in the bottom of one of them so one of the climate control uh, outlets will be going down straight into the bedroom area. Whereas the other one, I'm going to extend the ventilation pipe, push that through this side wall. And then that will be coming out probably underneath that uh, cupboard or round about this area anyway. And I'll be then feeding out some cold air into the living area as well. Now the climate control system does only work when the engine is running. But it means you can get the bus down to a really nice comfortable temperature while you're travelling on your way to somewhere. And then when you're there you park up and you're not going to be sitting in the sweat box. Which is all the more added bonus. And see so I've got the Smev oven that's pretty much all mounted in now. That just needs, again, the cupboards finishing off and fully boxing in. This is quite a nice Smev oven. I haven't seen one of these before on the market because it's actually got a curved door that opens to the side. Whereas most of the other Smev ovens I've seen just have a little flip down door on the front. But because the fridge freezer has a curved door, I tried to find a oven that also had a curved door. Just to go with the same sort of flow inside the bus. Now up front, I've already got some BMW 4 Series convertible seats fitted. With the passenger fitted on a swivel base as well. That's mounted to a FASP swivel base. And that's mounted onto one of the, the original Mercedes driver bases as well. So those seats aren't going anywhere and they look really nice. And obviously with the black leatherette on the sofa bed matching in with the black on the front seats as well. I think it looks quite nice and it just flows through. On the inside I've been busy applying some of the PVC cladding. Now this is actually cladding rather than just wallpaper. It's 3D vacuum moulded so as you can see there's actually texture to all of the individual bricks on the panels. So it's not just a flat sheet of wallpaper. You can see there's full texture going on all of the bricks going all the way down. I think it looks really nice. I just need some finishing trim applying just around the edges and another one or two panels just applying at the very back end there and then that'll be all of the living area cladding fully finished. As you can see there I've also got the Truma water heater controls that's for the gas and for the 240 volt and I've also got some dimmer switches fitted in in place ready for the lights for when they're ready to go in. I've got one dimmer switch here for the living area I've got another one there that's going to be used solely for the bathroom, for the bathroom lights. And then I've got one final one in the bedroom area to control the lights inside the bedroom. So they're all fully dimmable and when the light, lights are in place, I'll probably have four lights in the back area. Two in the bathroom and probably six in the living area covering the kitchen, the sofa bed, the fridge area, this, that, the other. So jobs wise, left to go. As I say, I've got the finish off, the full electric hookup system inside there. Most of it's coming along nicely. As I say, I've just got to finish off getting all the sockets in place. And I'm going to be having a plinth going along the side there that will also have a socket in place as well. And I've got the cables run behind the countertop. That's just going to need a little hole drilling up when I'm ready to have the plinth in place. Other than that, that's pretty much all the electrics all ready and in and sorted. So hopefully there'll be a video on the electrics coming soon. I've got to finish off all the cupboards, and that's going all the way around, the bedroom cupboards and the living area cupboards as well. And see, I've already got the fascias cut, so that's just going to be a case of getting the doors cut, some hinges cut, putting the liquor paint on them all, getting them all mounted in, and that'll be the cupboards done as well. I've got to finish off all the cladding in the kitchen area. Now I'm thinking of maybe tiling this back splashback area rather than going for the PVC cladding. I'm not 100% sure on hit this yet, there's still plenty of time for me to decide on that because I've still got plenty of other jobs to crack on with, but that's another job that still needs doing as well. I've got to get the shower door mounted for the bathroom, then got to get the toilet fitted in for the bathroom, get the bathroom window frosted over, get the ceiling cladding fitted in, get the lights fitted in, as you can see I've already got the cable there for the lights. A bit more plastic cladding around that area as well, and then that'll be the bathroom complete. So I've got the door, the toilet, cabling, electrics, some more cladding, and possibly an additional supporting wall going down there as well. In the front area, as I say, I've got the cupboards to finish off, and some surrounds to go around the windows just to make those nice and neat and trim. Now there are some unequal PVC corner trims that are available. 
where it will be like say 25 30 centimeters deep one side but it'll only be 10 centimeters the other so that will cover the insulation and overlap onto the cladding nicely so i've just got to nip out and get some of that and apply that all the way around same in the kitchen area as well because as you can see all of this is again insulated over ply panelled and once it's all cladded over that will also need some finishing trim going all the way around that as well kitchen cupboards need all the doors applying to them the fridge needs finishing off so I can finally get this little kitchen unit fully enclosed get the fridge fully in place then I can get the oven finally mounted in the final finishing position it's already gas piped and plumbed in the back but it's just not in its final finishing position until I can get the gas uh, fridge fully sorted out and working. I say the front seats, they're all sorted out, but I could do with some final finishing flooring just on the steps to make that look, look a little bit neater as well. And then there's still going to be plenty of window tinting to go all the way around. I've got all the PVC cladding to put up on the roof ceiling, all the lights to mount. And then on the exterior of the van, it's going to be getting a whole new respray, probably in some Raptor paint. So, as you can see, the build's been progressing along really nicely. I've got a lot of jobs ticked off, fully completed. But as you can see, still see, there's lots of other jobs still straggling along that just need those final finishing touches applying. So, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to get the electrics fully finished off in that cupboard. Once the electrics are fully finished and wired in, I'll be able to also show the water heater that's under there. And I'll say there's the Truma water heater. It's all plumbed in, it's all wired in, it's got all the water pipes going to it. It just needs the electric, the final electric plug wiring on, and then that can be tested on the electrics because I've already fired it up on the gas and know that that works fine. So, as you can see, the build's progressing really nicely. I'm hoping within the next, hopefully, month or two, it should be fully finished off. And then I'll be able to start cracking on with my next build, as you can see. I've got another bus there that's waiting to be started. So, I hope you found this video useful of my progress on this Mercedes minibus motorhome conversion. So, lots of jobs fully finished, but there's still lots more plenty, uh, lots more jobs to come. So, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and follow along with this build. If you want to see any of the jobs that are fully finished, they're all documented job by job on my channel. So, just have a look there. And there's loads of uh, videos on there covering this build, two previous VWs, two previous Daihatsus, a Ford Connect loads of different uh, builds already documented job by job on my channel so have a look through those for previous builds give this video a good old thumbs up if you haven't already hit that subscribe button to follow along with this build as well and hopefully i'll see you on the next video of the series of this build thanks for watching cheers